All right, we're gonna talk about knife performance today. A uh, few things had me thinking about this over the past few months. All the budget steel testing I did and all the different variables on the knives that I used to cut, you know, some were a dream to cut with, other ones, even, even though they, you know, a certain steel that I was testing if I tested another knife in it, one might cut great and the other one was like trying to push a brick down a sidewalk. I mean, it's still cut, but there were issues with it. So, besides my own testing, Nero Knives, and I'm also thinking about his videos because this is going out to him today, um, my new Benchmade Freak. I haven't sharpened it yet. Um, I didn't. I didn't even play with it. I haven't had time with the other modifications and acid brass washing I've been doing. But I figure he can get a good impression out of the box. It does have the tiniest bit of lock rock and a tiny bit of side to side play. You know, that's probably why the action was so great right out of the box. So this will be going off today. And because it's going off, I'm going to do a week or two with the automatic. See if, you know, to see if it's for me. I know I talked about it briefly in the other video. But I'm going to go ahead and carry this and see whether it's going to stick around or not. Another thing that got me thinking about it was this little guy right here this Enzo Necker. John Scarborough let me borrow it from the Sharp Spot page to test 12C27. And I sharpened it up. I got to looking at it. I took a couple measurements on it because I thought that it was really thin behind the edge. And it is. It has 0 .120 blade stock. And it's 13 thousandths behind the edge. So, I've already done a few cuts, but just like I thought, this thing slices. I mean, it's, it's, of, <laughs> of course, this thing slices great. I mean, it takes almost no force to just push it right down through the cardboard. Super thin, where on the other end... we have something like this to you and it's a uh, 0.150 blade stock and it's 24 thousandths behind the edge it still cuts but you can definitely feel the pressure difference that it requires to cut even though it's sharp enough to whittle hair Another thing to consider, this FH11 that I put the coating on, it is .130 blade stock, it's 18 thousandths behind the edge, but just because it's 18 thousandths behind the edge, the height of the blade is short, so it makes a rather quick wedge. So it isn't hard to cut with, but in terms of force required to cut, and this is a pretty fresh at, fresh edge. This actually takes more force to push through the cardboard than this does. Even though this is thicker behind the edge, this is less of a wedge trying to go through the cardboard than this is. So, it's one of those things that needs to be touched on more. I don't think there is enough information out there as far as blade stock and thickness behind the edge. This Bird Raven 2. It's .1475 thick blade stock, and it's 18 thousandths behind the edge. So even though it has thick stock, 
this thing just slices amazing. I mean, it takes almost no force to push it right down through the cardboard. And I, I've been using this at work for a week, so it, it, it isn't even a fresh edge on here. So that's where this super easy, you know, thicker blade stock versus this. And while this doesn't cut horrible, the Freak is 23 thousandths behind the edge with a 0.112 blade stock. So it's not a very thick stock, but it's thicker behind the edge. And it still cuts okay, but it does require more force to do the same cut. So this is in part also because I just watched another video yesterday where it was assumed that because a knife had thin blade stock that it was going to be an excellent slicer even though it was an unboxing and nothing had been measured yet. So I mean that that's something that really bothers me as well is the assumption that because the blade stock is thin it it's gonna slice great the Mannix the people in the groups I'm in they know I love my Mannixes it's .125 blade stock it's 20 thousandths behind the edge I use one of my many Mannixes a lot so that's kind of what I I have a I have a mental note of the pressure it takes to do cutting tasks with this so when I'm using something else my mind's automatically always comparing it so you know this this is what has become my acceptable you know or or it should at least be this good to cut with when I'm using it. That's why this, you know, just by feel, I automatically knew it wasn't going to be very thin behind the edge. Just like this, even though I measured it and I knew it was thin behind the edge or thinner behind the edge, that because the blade's so short, it isn't even as wide as my thumb from the edge to the spine requires more pressure to use this than it does this. Here's the first one up the modify out of the ones I got yesterday. And I have two more at the house for modification that I need to measure behind the edge also but I could visibly tell that it was going to be thicker behind the edge than my original one that I modified to keep and it still does I mean it still cuts just fine it's comparable to the Mannix as far as how it cuts but this one is a uniform 20 thousandths behind the edge from the choil all the way to the tip where my my personal one um, I don't know if they're hand ground or what the deal is but mine is 14 thousandths at the choil and 10 thousandths at the tip and it's a really good slicer I love cutting cardboard up with it it's very nice to use so then we have this this is more of a harder use knife the Hogue EX a01 it's 0 0.150 blade stock it is 25 thousandths behind the edge right here before the combination starts and it is 36 thousandths behind the edge at the tip so definitely not thin behind the tip if I was gonna do any kind of if I had to do any kind of picking or anything like that, this this would probably be one of the knives I would use if if all I had on me were were a few folding knives. But this doesn't cut as bad as I thought it would 
when I measured it. It does require a little bit more force than the Manix, but it is, it's, this definitely, the 2U definitely takes more force to cut with, and so does the FH11. And the coating is not, you know, well, it, it's pretty smooth. That acid brass finish I put on there. So that's definitely not what's holding it up because it's much better up here by the tip where it's thinner. But that's just some things for you guys to consider. And let's see. These two are also going out today. They're going to Super Steel Steve on Instagram and he has a YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in steels at all, you should go check out the tests he's been doing comparing steels. You know, ones that are comparable to each other and then different brands of the same steel. But these are for him to do AUS-10 versus CTS BD-1. And then I'll be able to compare his results with mine, even though he does a different type of testing. I like BD-1. It did pretty well in the testing. This did outperform it, though, by approximately 8%. So, it's not, you know, it's, it's not a huge difference, but I'm curious to see, is it going to keep the same type of spread when he's doing his test? Does this lose its shaving edge faster than this does or does this one lose it first and just hold a working edge longer but we're gonna find that out and like I said Nero Knives if you haven't watched any of his stuff he's got some great videos about cutting prying blade stock versus thickness behind the edge go watch him subscribe to him Lots of great information over there. But that's about it for now. I'm going to modify this in the next couple days. I'll do a video on it. And we'll see what it ends up looking like with the green. I actually like the green on this model more than I thought I would. So I'm curious to see what it's going to end up looking like with this finish on it. I think it's going to match pretty well. So that's it this morning, guys. Sorry that I jumped around so much just talking about different things. Any questions, comments, feedback, leave it down below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.